speaking of which, we want to touch on cancer, motherhood, and pregnancy uh, in our discussions here today. Now, a cancer diagnosis is always upsetting, and that's especially true when the patient is pregnant. And this is one of the things that just blows my mind because you you just like, how? How does that even happen, right? But October, of course, is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and... Um, a lot of breast cancer happens to affect women, although there are men as well suffering from breast cancer. And uh, today we want to look at cancer, motherhood and pregnancy. What are the dynamics between having cancer when one is pregnant? What happens after that? What sort of treatment options can you do that would be safe for you and for the baby? And is your baby safe even after that? Can you get back to a normal life? Every question from even how do you breastfeed? You know, is that even possible when you um, are a mother uh, struggling as well with cancer? And so that's what we want to talk about right now. So, Dr. Tari, is it very common to see nowadays, I guess, um, a pregnant lady also suffering from breast cancer? Uh, cancer per se in pregnancy is not so common. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not so common you have pregnancy together in cancer. Mm -hmm. But what is happening these days is like, as the girls, the ladies are now getting babies later in their life because of career and progression in life. So mm -hmm. getting babies later in life. Mm -hmm. And then also cancer tends to come around that age. Oh. So there might be, in the future, we might be seeing increasing numbers of cancer that occurring in pregnancy. Okay, so it's mostly a coincidence. It's mostly though. a coincidence. But as per se, pregnancy and cancer, it's not so uncommon. Okay. It's like maybe, say, one in a thousand pregnancies every year would get a cancer in, right. with pregnancy. Right. Yeah. Nonetheless, there are women um, suffering with through suffering cancer from, while yeah. pregnant. pregnant. I yeah. actually had a guest here once who was, was battling cancer um, while she was expecting. And, um, and so then in that situation where the mother is actually facing or battling cancer, who, who, what is the effect on the baby? Cancer itself has no effect on the baby. Okay. It's the treatment that you give to treat that cancer that can have an effect on okay. the baby per mm -hmm. se. Mm -hmm. But like cancer cells will not pass to the placenta and enter into the baby and cause cancer in the baby. Mm. There are very few cases where, where the cancer itself has metastasized mm -hmm. and found in the placenta or in the baby. But it's just, those are very, those are just exceptional cases. Right. They're, they're, not, they're not the normal cases. Right. So cancer itself per se does not affect the baby. It also affects the mother. Okay. In a way that pregnancy itself is a, there's a lot of emotions attached to pregnancy mm. and then you get another cancer is still very much emotive. So right. the mother goes to a whole drama of emotions and she just like does not know what is happening and how to go about. So there's lots yeah. of emotions that are clashing. There's a happy face for being pregnant and now we get another cancer. So the yeah. mother is worried. What next? Who yeah. will take care of my baby? And so those, those are the issues that really bring up during uh, the initial initial diagnosis of cancer during pregnancy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Beatrice, the thought that's in my mind right now is putting aside the rich and the middle class, there's a lot of just regular, regular Kenyans, ordinary Kenyans who are also suffering from cancer. And then we also look at even things like maternal health care in this country still having tremendous challenges. Mm -hmm. And the idea that there's someone somewhere having to deal with both of those issues mm -hmm. is very puzzling to me. And as a health economist, what's your take on the state of where our medical infrastructure is, our medical um, industry is, to actually address these challenges and give people a good fighting chance? All right. Uh, first and foremost, uh, cancer in itself can affect anyone. And uh, just because someone is diagnosed with cancer does not necessarily mean they are not uh, human and continuing with their life. So most likely you can be diagnosed with cancer, but you, your life is in, co in continuity and you might act get pregnant and you realize you have cancer yes but you you're already pregnant so how do you go about it mm -hmm. uh it's surprisingly that the current infrastructure uh being set up by the government especially in our public setting they have not yet set uh set up good equipments uh, that can 
diagnose cancer at early stages. So most of the time you find, and Daktari may agree with me, that uh, by the time uh, somebody actually visits a doctor is when cancer is almost in its final stages. Mm. And that's why uh, we, uh, in the mom's hangout, that we are creating the awareness on the 26th of October, uh, that is the coming Saturday. We want to create this awareness so that people can be able to know way early. Because when cancer is diagnosed very early, there's a high chance that an opportunity that it can uh, actually be mitigated. And because some of the diagnostic equipment, the more cancer is advanced, the more expensive in terms of diag diagnostic uh, processes. But yeah. if you are able to do it quite early, it might actually save you a lot of money. From my economy side of view is that I, I usually tell people prevention is better than cure right. the more you do your examination the more you go for the diag uh, uh, diagnostic um uh, uh, services, it actually saves you more money than actually going for the curative processes. Mm -hmm. so the only problem is that we Kenyans, we like delaying and we wait the last minute so that you can rush. You remember, oh, this, I know of a certain doctor, could I see them? Mm -hmm. Make the doctor your friend and try as early as possible to get diagnosed as early as okay. possible and doing a lot of preventive. Right now in Africa, per se, even in the Kenyan setting, uh, we are not so good at curative. The okay. health reforms, the, the budgeting, uh, the bills are all spilling all over. So the all best right. angle we should actually be working hard towards is more of preventive, even at a house scale, house right. scale level. Yeah. All right, yeah. all right. Yeah. Um, and we're going to touch a bit more on that, some of the preventive uh, measures as well, which include our own lifestyles and how we conduct ourselves on a day-to-day -day basis, what we eat, our activity levels, uh, pregnant or not. Um, you know, what are we actually doing to perhaps contribute to some of those factors increasing in our bodies? Listen so much more when we come back from the short break. Stay tuned and of course keep sending in your feedback to double two triple nine and also comment on our social media platforms on Facebook and Twitter at Switch TV K E or rather Switch TV Kenya and on Instagram at Switch TV K E. I'll be back in just a bit. guys welcome back to full circle with joyce let me send out some more shout outs here on our instagram page that's switch tv ke i see you caroline 3485 you say good morning joyce looking beautiful tuned in from juja asante sana we also have caesar wanjama who says good morning full circle with joyce i'm caesar watching you from embakasi eastern bypass thank you very much for being a part of the show and of course remember you can also sms in to double two triple nine and also comment on our facebook and twitter pages which is at switch tv kenya and on sms i do have a couple comments there cynthia tuned in from ruaka you say you're enjoying the show you're always a mentor and inspiration and uh you, this show you really do appreciate it asante sana for that i do appreciate all of you guys keep that feedback coming in even as we continue with our discussion here in studio on cancer uh, pregnancy and motherhood in general and just before the break we were Beatrice was really challenging us to look at preventative measures and one of the things then you know in addition to early screenings because that's absolutely important is also our lifestyle and Dr. how much of our lifestyle today plays into um, the rise of, of cancer cases Okay, lifestyle plays a, 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 a major role in cancer cases, mm -hmm. but it's one of those factors that you can modify it. Okay. Like, and if you change your lifestyle, you can, you can actually get, prevent yourself from getting cancers. Mm -hmm. One of the most important lives is physical inactivity and sedentary. Like you're just like, you, you wake up in the morning, you sit in your car, you go to the office, you sit in your table chair, mm. 8 to 5, you wake up again, sit in your car, come back home, mm. go to sleep. Mm. Just, there's no activities, it's just been sedentary lifestyle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then this is then worsened by the fact you compound it with eating fast foods, mm. foods from uh, burgers, fries and pizzas, so that you have that small lunch break and you want to eat fast and finish quickly and then come back and work. Mm. 
and then so this now all this now leads to obesity and weight gain and now these are some of the risk factors that can cause you get cancer those are things that you can prevent yourself mm. so preventing by eating a very good balanced diet what our grandfathers used to tell you eat this uh, so you eat a uh, you eat a uh, well balanced diet enough yeah. of fruits enough of vegetables mm -hmm. you have an activity you at least walk at least a daily for at least half an hour so they're keeping yourself on the move yeah. and so this can really help you to prevent getting um, these cancers these cancers the another thing that has come is the fed of smoking like if i smoke i look like wow in my social mm. circle mm -hmm. and smoking causes is a risk factor for almost all types of cancer wow. so you need to stop smoking it's not cool it's not cool <laughs> at all you may look cool for a while but it's not so cool yeah so you need to stop smoking so these are some of those you can change it can make a great impact on getting on preventing cancers sure sure yeah. And um, Beatrice, you know, as I think about it, I'm, I'm remembering Michelle Obama, of mm -hmm. course, and her huge campaign on eating well and yes. starting that off even with children. Yes. And just last week, we were talking about obesity in children, which is also on the rise here in yes. Kenya. So our poor lifestyle choices as adults are also trickling down to the younger ones. Um, but, you know, from a health economist perspective, yeah. do we have any sort of national um, activity or initiatives at that level where we're seeing now this drive towards, you know, more active lifestyles, better, you know, concern about what we're actually eating. We're hearing a lot about how our ambogas are planted through where and have how many sorts of chemicals, you know, the lead, the all the sort of <laughs> bad things in our water. You know, so even from that perspective, even uh -huh. if I go jogging every day, yes. if I can't be assured that I'm going to get, you know, clean, proper, safe water to drink, which yes. should be a human right. Yes. Yeah, safe water to drink, mm -hmm. and then that there's policies in place to ensure that the food I eat is also safe when I'm trying to eat healthy. Do we have anything like that? Um, before the main uh, uh, government uh, officials uh, got affected by cancer, uh, it was on harsh tunes. Uh, the government was not actually not talking much about it. Even right now, currently, they are focusing on malaria, HIV, AIDS, and guys are like, where is cancer? Where is cancer? Why are we not talking about cancer? But because right now it's being uh, addressed in an alarming rate, we are seeing more people trying to talk about it, even researchers. Uh, we, 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 with our own organization, we have a researcher who is actually trying to speak more. But earlier on, she tried going to uh, government officials, trying to have a bill about cancer on parliament, but there were so many handles. But at times it, it reaches to a point until a senior person is affected in these countries when people realize oh there's this calamity we need to do something about it but what i would like to tell every kenyan is that first and foremost health is actually in your hands first before it goes to the government before you complain to the doctor or the government health starts with you okay. so when the health starts with you ask yourself where where is the source of your food do you just eat any food just because you found any food where does your mama boga get her food from because by the time it goes to a national level or a policy level how many people have died so um for the idea, take initiative first as an individual. Take initiative for your family members. So as a mother, what food, what food are you giving your children? What food are you feeding your husband? Eh? Is it a balanced diet, like Dr. Terry has said? Is it a balanced diet? Are you allowing your kids to play or are they just watching television the whole time? Are you allowing them to be active or are you beating them because they're trying to be active? Allow the children <laughs> to play, you know. So when you start it as a personal level, when you take health as a personal level, not sure. a government initiative, but a personal initiative, yeah. then from there on, the government will, will find you along as yeah. you're trying to do it. But All it's right. good we know where our source of food is coming from. Yeah. And what are we feeding our children? What are we as mothers feeding our husbands also? Because it's a whole continuous spectrum. Right. Yeah. You, right. And you can never uh, exercise a bad diet. Sure. Never, you can never exercise a bad diet. Okay. Yeah. Dr. Tanya, as we wind up then, um, I, I want you to talk about this, the options that are available then for mothers currently finding themselves you know, pregnant, but also with a cancer scare or actually having been diagnosed with cancer 
and um, just what sort of options they have because as you mentioned already th those are just two huge things to carry <laughs> and uh, I think it would be it would be fitting to sort of just put out there what the different options are. The options of treatment when a patient has cancer pregnancy depends on a lot of factors. The first major is the stage of the pregnancy, at what stage the pregnancy is. Mm -hmm. Then the second is the type, the site, and the stage of the cancer itself. Mm. What type of cancer it is, what is the stage of the cancer, how far, stage I mean how far does cancer sure. spread, mm -hmm. and where it is located, is it in the breast, is mm -hmm. it in the cervix, is it in the lungs? Mm -hmm. so, and then finally, the wishes of the family and the patient should be taken into consideration. What does the, f the patient herself want okay. regarding both her cancer treatment and her pregnancy? Right. right. So those are the options that the, 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 that the patient and the doctor has to discuss right. before uh, opting for any treatment options. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not a single doctor game now. Mm. So pregnancy is a whole different ball game. So you need people you need to call like, the obstetrician, the doctor who takes care of the pregnancy to be right. involved because right. now this becomes a high risk pregnancy. Sure. Mm -hmm. okay? You need to involve the counselors, the support staff because there are lots of things I mentioned earlier that the mother is going through at this moment. Mm -hmm. okay? In basically, in all general terms, there are basically three main treatment options that we have. We have surgery, we have chemotherapy where you give the drugs mm -hmm. and you have radi radiotherapy where you get the radiation ion. Mm -hmm. This can be used, either, they can be used as single therapy or they can be used combined together. Even for the pregnant? No, not, not general, I'm talking about general. Okay. okay. Now we come to pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Because of the current development of s in surgery, surgery is almost safe okay. during pregnancy, what, regardless of which, which stage the patient is on. Okay. 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 So. If it's very early, you can just do surgery and get rid of the tumor. Okay. So surgery is safe. Okay. Chemotherapy, I, giving, giving the chemotherapy is not safe during the first trimester, the first 13 weeks of pregnancy. Okay. At that time, we do not give chemotherapy. Right. It is that during that time, the baby is developing new organs. It's, it's called self organogenesis, the organs being formed. All right. okay. yeah. In the second trimester and about mid third trimester, it is a bit safer to give chemotherapy, but the, still, the, the risk still remains there sure. that she might get a stillbirth or she might get miscarriage in between. Okay. Because at this time, it is the baby is now growing and maturing. There's not so much organ formation happening. Okay. Radiotherapy is a no-no throughout okay. pregnancy. Okay. I mean, just can even the, the normal X-ray that you want to give. Yeah. It's not a known in a cell, but you need to shield the baby. Sure. You put something on a lead plate so the baby does not get the rays. That's a normal x-ray. Right. But radiation therapy is a no, no. No. absolutely no, no. Okay. So if you want to post it, do it after her delivery. All right. So yeah. I think we can sum this up by just saying it's so important for that early detection because then the earlier you detect, it's easier even with the surgery yeah. option, which yeah. would be the best option. And so, you know, there's, there's a measure of hope for all of us out there. And for those of you who are struggling, um, may you be encouraged. I know that there are mothers who've been able to conquer and survive this and go on and had very healthy, beautiful babies. And so we thank you both for coming on to Full Circle with Joyce today. Thank you very much. Great. Guys, we're going to get ready for our second hour. And uh, we're going to be talking about relationships. And like I did mention, we're going to be talking about toxicity in relationships. Are you dating a toxic person? Um, and also, uh, we're going to be talking to a couple that had actually once separated but have reunited once again. This and so much more coming up next on Full Circle with Joyce. Do stay tuned. I'll see you at the top of the hour.